right. So welcome, everybody. This is Let's Learn with Advent. My name, of course, <laughs> is Advent on the internet. Or if you know me outside of that, my name is Desi. Either one is fine. Um, pretty much the agenda for today. Actually, before I get into that, as customary, I am not a financial advisor and all that good stuff. This is just for educational purposes. Trading does have its risks, so definitely do your research uh, before you start engaging in trading. And with that out the way, uh, the agenda for today, we're going to briefly be talking about uh, futures, you know, what they are, um, not necessarily how to trade them, but like the difference in them compared to options and things like that. Um, I won't go too deep into it since I want to get to the strategy that I use for the watch list that you guys see on a daily basis. And then I also want to open up the floor. So any questions you guys may have, uh, whether it's about what we're going over or anything else, you know, if you need like any tips or tricks to, bet to help your trading, you know, the floor is open. So literally anything goes. And again, you know, we're all human here. We're, all, we're here to get better and improving our trading so there's no judgment. Never feel um, like if you're being judged, we've all been there, I've made mistakes. I learned a lot in the four years I've been trading. So I'm pretty sure whatever you may be experienced, I have experienced it already and many others. Cool, so with all that being said, let's get started. Also, um, if you have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to uh, just type it in the chat. You can also come off of mute. Um, I can go off on tangents sometimes. I just, I, you know, I just love talking about this stuff. So if you let me, we'll be here for three hours, but I try to keep it to an hour as best I can. Cool. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So futures um, is essentially just a, another instrument that you can trade. It's a, a derivative product. And essentially, when it comes to futures compared to, let's say, options, it can be a little confusing at first. And for some reason, this is not loading. But yeah, it can be a little confusing at first in the sense of, I'll just use the YM chart for now. It can be a little confusing at first due to, you know, if you're coming from options, when it comes to futures, while you can trade options on futures, um, it's different when you're trading the futures instrument in and of itself in the sense of you're not necessarily trading um, like an expiration date. Technically you are, but uh, very, it's it's not the same as options. And I'll show you an example in a few moments. Also, right, because it doesn't have um, data decay, right? Exactly. So when it comes to futures, while there are expiration dates, for example, Carrington, your mic is on. Your mic is on. So for futures, let me actually go, I think it should. Yeah, so for futures, it'll be expiration dates in the sense of this. So each month or each quarter has uh, different contracts that you'll trade on. Right now we're on the June contract. So YMM 2024. Uh, but like I mentioned, it's very different than options in the sense that uh, you don't need to choose a strike price or expiration date per se, depending the broker you're using, it's always going to be on the current contract. So you don't need to like fumble around trying to pick the specific month contract. Now, what I love about futures that I wish I knew way before I started trading options is like you mentioned, there is no theta decay. So let's say for the sake of the conversation, this is the YM chart, the Dow Jones futures contract. And essentially, let's just say I get in at 38208 and I go long. Now, for um, YM, for every point that it moves, we don't really use dollars. We just use it as points. So if it goes 209 to, to I'm sorry, uh, 208 to 209, that'll be considered one point movement. And for YM, one point is equivalent to $5 that you make per point per contract. So if I were to get in long at 38208 and it goes to 210, then I made $10 on that position. Making sense? Questions before I continue? 
Nope, you're good. Cool. Now, some people may be confused in the sense of, I get this question a lot, like, all right, well, how much does it cost for one contract, right? Now, it's different than options because you'll be paying the premium when it comes to... Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the specific strike price, expiration date, all that stuff that you're trading. So let me actually bring this up so I can show you guys. One sec. For futures, it works differently in the sense that it's, you know, futures, you're trading on margin. So it's different than uh, options in the sense that depending on the broker that you use, the margin requirements may be more, it may be less. So let's just say for the sake of the conversation, looking at YM, if you wanted to buy one contract of YM, you need to at least have $500 in your account, which is the day margin. So if you're going to be day trading it, you need at least $500 in the account per contract. If you're going to hold the position overnight, and for futures, overnight is from 5 p.m. Eastern to, or 4, yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern. The market closes for an hour. So if you hold that contract overnight, you'll need to have $9,240 in your account because the margin requirements uh, jump up dramatically when it's closed. Making sense? Questions, anybody? Confusing? Cool. Okay. And depending what, like I mentioned, what broker you're using, the margin requirements are different. So if this is Tradevate. I, I use Tradevate myself. It's the lowest margin requirements that I know of in the sense of if we're looking at, let's say, YM, and this is on Tradevate, it's $500. But if we go to Thinkorswim, and I'll bring that up in a bit. Oh, whoops. It logged me out. Give me one sec. Uh, but for Thinkorswim, or if, any, if anybody uses Schwab, uh, the margin requirements are much higher. They are very, very, um, they're not as lenient, to say the least, compared to other brokers. So the margin requirements are going to be a lot more. The only benefit, I would say, when it comes to trading futures on Thinkorswim is that you do not pay for data. So everything is free. You just pay a little more in commissions. I think it's like by like standards, like 225 round trip. So let's go to, so yeah, why I'm here, you need at least $10,560 to buy one contract. Now, the next portion uh, that I'll go over is the tick value. The tick value, is essentially just, um, you know, depending what you're trading, the tick values and the point values are different. And I'll write it down since some people are uh, work better when they're viewing it. So let's say, for example, there's tick value and then the point value. And then depending what you're trading, there's going to be a different amount of tick values in one point compared to others. So let's just use the example of ES. This is the S&P 500 futures. So one tick on ES equals $12.50 that you gain or lose on the position. And one point equals four ticks, which equals uh, $50 per point. So on ES, every every point that it moves for or against you, you'll make $50 or you'll lose $50. If you're coming from options, you can uh, conceptualize it as a, let's say, an, an option contract with a fixed delta um, of 50. So you're making or losing $50 uh, per point on ES. Making sense? Questions? Cool. Now, the <clears throat> let me go back to this screen. 
the mini contracts, you can look at it as like the parent contracts. And then the micro, you can think of it, you know, like the child contract or just the micro contract. The micro contracts are worth one tenth of the mini contract. So like I mentioned in ES, these will be the tick values. If we go to MES, which is the micro version of ES, that'll be, uh, like I mentioned, one tenth the value. So 125 per tick, and then one point will equal $5 that you make or lose when it goes on in, you, in or against you. Now, generally, it's recommended from what I've seen to start off with MES or the micro contracts. Generally, MES, because it is, um, it's, a, it's a lot less forgiving when you're starting out. Because you know, if you're trading the regular ES contract, that $50 point move, that can add up very quickly if it's going against you and your strategy isn't solid for futures. So if you are going to start off trading futures, definitely paper trade and also get a feel for you know the specific futures that you may want to trade. And for futures, you can literally trade anything. Uh, like I mentioned, there's NQ, that's tech. Uh, the Russell, that's small caps. YM, Dow Jones, ES, S&P 500. So if you trade SPY, SPY is, is um, essentially moves from the S and the from the ES contract from the from the futures rather, and there's a bunch of other things you can trade Bitcoin futures. Um, for those people who may trade forex, um, you can trade <clears throat> you can trade forex futures, which to me is way more efficient than trading forex because you don't have to worry about spreads, which is super annoying. You can trade oil, natural gas. You can literally trade soybeans if you wanted, literally whatever you want. There's a bunch of different um, things there. All right. Now, like I mentioned, if you are going to start off, start out, definitely paper trade, get a feel for it. And you can start off with MES and then move to the other ones. When I first started, I was using um, MES. And then from there, I moved from ES. And then I discovered NQ, which can be very volatile. Uh, NQ for one point, it's $20 that you make or lose. And if you are going to trade NQ, highly, highly, highly recommend paper trading because one candle can hit you for about 20 points. And that's a lot. It's like $400 for or against you. And those pullbacks and those movements are super quick. For me, uh, after I traded NQ for a while, I discovered YM. And to me, ES was a little slow for me. NQ was fast, which is what I love. I love the volatility, but the pullbacks can be a little brutal. So for me, YM is a healthy balance of you'll get the volatility and the quick movement of the uh, you know of the futures contract, but it's not as unforgiving as NQ because those pullbacks on NQ when they start waking you out, they're crazy. One thing as well that you guys can look into, let's say if you may not want to use your own capital when it comes to um, trading futures, if you don't know, there are prop firms that you can use. Uh, prop firms are essentially uh, businesses that will front you money or front you accounts for a low amount of capital. Uh, the one that I use personally is Apex. So let's say for the sake of the conversation to just show you guys a an actual uh, you know person in, in person example. There's different uh capital that they give you. And they usually have discounts. I think they have like 80% off right now. So you can get like a 25k account for like 30, 40 bucks, if that, a month. And you guys may be thinking, well, what happens if I blow the account? So for prop firms, you're actually trading on a demo account. They don't put you on a live account. So if you blow the account, the most you lose is whatever you paid for the, um, whatever you pay for the challenge or 
the specific account that you chose. And they have different ones range from 25K to I think like 300K. This to me is a good starting point because again, you don't need to risk your personal capital. Um, you just pay, you just lose whatever, um, whatever you paid for the uh, challenge. Now, essentially the way it works is once you get the challenge, you have to hit a profit goal of, in this case, for a 25K account, $1,500. They give you the allotment of four mini contracts or 40 micros. Now, something to pay attention to. Just because they give you four mini contracts does not mean that you should be trading with four mini contracts. Because if you, let's say, go full size, four contracts on ES, remember, it's $50 per point per contract. So if you if you put on four contracts... That's 200 points per uh, per point uh, that you'll that go for or against you. And with a with a trailing threshold of 1500, if it goes against you by that much, the account is gone. And that'll be what? 200 points is five. That's seven and a half points before the account is blown if you go full size. I did make a video which I'll uh, link. So this video, when I upload it, which will give you a guide if you're going to be using prop firms. And then after you pass the challenge, they, then they give you the quote unquote real account. It's still a demo account. But once you reach the profit goal again, uh, from there, you can start getting payouts. And you'll, they, once you get the, once you pass the challenge, you either pay a monthly fee or you have the option to pay a one-time activation fee. It's like one... 40 to like 180 and then you could just get payouts as long as you keep the account and don't uh, break the rules that they have in store any questions before i continue cool and again um if you are going to be using uh prop firms to start out with uh, for some benefits of it, like I mentioned, if you don't have that much money starting out, you can use this to fund your own account. While I do have my personal futures account, I mainly trade on the funded accounts because I can leverage a lot higher. And then I use the funds that I, the payouts that I get to fund my personal accounts. So, and I'll post the links um, to the different ones that I use and the videos and such to help out if you are going to be starting out. Yeah, Top Step. Um, I, I've never used Top Step. I have friends who use it. The only thing that I don't like about Top Step is the, I think like that consistency rule thing that they have is like, the, it's a little weird for me. As There's no consistency rule per se for Apex, uh, but the consistency rule, um, it can set you back. Yeah, exactly. It can set you back because... Let's say you make three thousand dollars in a day, but your average is two hundred. They will, um, they will. I forget exactly how it works, but the way I, I make it make sense in my head. And for those who use it, you know, you understand. But I won't try to make it make sense for those who don't. But essentially, if you make three thousand dollars in one day, and then you make two hundred dollars the rest of the days, they'll actually. I think they increase your uh, consistency threshold or something like that. So now you have to make uh, two, three thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, it's a little weird for top step, but for Apex, they don't have that weird 50% rule thing. So this works for me. Another one that's good that I'll put in the, the description when I finish out, uh, when I upload this video for you guys to rewatch and I'll post it in my channel as well. Um, is Take Profit Trader. I haven't used it yet, mainly because I have another prop firm with FTMO uh, that I still use. But I'll eventually go to Trader uh, to Take Profit Trader. They let you take payouts on a weekly basis. Uh, it's not like Apex or the other ones that, that they let you take payouts like every two weeks or like once a month, things like that. Um, and as soon as you pass the challenge, you can start taking money out immediately. Uh, once you get the the live account. 
All right, I'll stop there for the futures portion and move on to the strategy that I use for options. Uh, before I continue into the next portion, do you guys have any questions? You can come off mute or you can type into the chat, either one. Uh, really, really quick. Yeah, no questions, but um, you because I know you use the strat, so you're about to go into that. That's pretty much the the questions I had. Um, I, I'm kind of curious how how do you pick out you know um your callouts in the morning? <clears throat> gotcha. I'll definitely go over um how I create my watch list. Gotcha. After I give everybody the 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 basis or fundamentals for the strat, um, but it's super super simple. Um. All right, let's go into the strat. Let's bring up my chart here. And let's bring up our good old buddy, Bitcoin. Whoops, that is not Bitcoin. All right, so the strat, for those who don't know or who may be new to it, the strat is uh, essentially a strategy based on price action. It's literally price action simplified. It was a huge game changer for me when I learned it two years ago. I used to be Mr. Spaghetti Lines, EMAs everywhere, RSI, all that stuff. And I may ruffle some feathers personally. And, I, and again, personal opinion, and I'm super biased. But once I discovered this, all that stuff to me is garbage. Again. Personal preference. If it works for you, don't listen to me. Keep on doing what works for you. And again, it is valid, all those other strategies. This is just what I personally love. And it's really simplified trading for me. So the strat, um, like I mentioned, is a price action strategy, which was created by Rob Smith. He was a floor trader for quite some years. And uh, with the strat, essentially, there are uh, three components of it or three universal truths. The first universal truth is actionable signals, which we'll be discussing. The second portion is broadening information, which is support and resistance for strat users. And then the third component is time continuity, which I'll touch on as well. So to get so to begin from scratch, you guys may be looking at my chart and be like, Advent, what the heck are all these numbers under your candles? So uh, Rob Smith describes uh, different candle types as three different scenarios. So there are three scenarios when it comes to the market. There is an inside bar, and I'll zoom in here. There is an inside bar or a one bar, that's scenario one. A scenario one simply means um, a candle, <coughs> excuse me, a candle that's trading inside of the previous candle. So it does not break the high and it does not break a low. That is scenario one. The significance of a scenario one candle is simply lets us know that um, nothing is really happening. Price is kind of just consolidating and we're just waiting for a move. We will never ever ever enter a trade on a one bar or an inside bar because that is not a trigger for a setup. That is simply the candle setting up for a potential move and I'll make it make more sense in a few moments. The next scenario is scenario two, as we can see here on these two candles. Scenario two is a directional bar. There's two versions. There's a two up and there's a two down. The two up candle, pretty straightforward, it breaks the previous high of the previous candle as we have right here. A two down candle, as we have right here, breaks the previous low of the previous candle. And then the third scenario is scenario three, which you guys may know of as a mother bar or an outside bar. It breaks the high and the low of the previous candle. And outside bars, they're simply just letting us know that, that the price is expanding. It's expanding the range that we'll be moving into instead of continue, continuously going up or continuously going down. Any questions before I continue? Can you just repeat four again? Sorry, can, can uh, for scenario three? Four, the, um, would you call it the mother something? 
Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So scenario three would be a mother bar oh, three. or okay. an outside bar that people may know it as. Rob uh, just keeps it simple with numbers. There's a one scenario, two, or a three. And of course, any uh, scenario can be different candle types. We have a doji here. We have another doji. Um, you know, there's a doji there. There's a hammer, another hammer there. Uh, but again, we're just looking at the different scenarios. The candle types don't necessarily matter right now for you to learn this. Um, we're just going over the scenarios for now. Uh, but did that make sense for scenario three, the mother bars and such? Yep. Cool. Now, the next portion of the strat is broader informations. Like I mentioned, uh, broader informations are simply support and resistance for strat users. Let me get rid of this. I had a session earlier with a student. So broader informations are uh, three candles or scenario three. Is broader is a broadening formation on a lower time frame, and I'll make it make sense in a few moments. So since broadening, so since uh, three candles are broadening formations on a lower time frame, it it just makes sense to draw broadening formations from three candles. I won't go too deep into how to draw them today, since you know we're on a time crunch. Uh, let me make sure we're good here. Yep. So that'll be the top one. And then this will be the bottom one. And let me draw a cleaner one for you guys. That one is a little flat on the top. Let's do this one. Whoops, this is not Thinker's one. Then that low here. So here we have our broader information off of this three candle on the four hour time frame. So one thing to keep in mind when you're drawing your broadening formations, price uh, price should be expanding. The, the line should be expanding the range like a megaphone. If you're drawing something like this, that's incorrect. That is a trend line, which of course this is a trend line as well. But again, we're expanding the range. We're not um, closing the range when we're drawing our broadening formations. So this is the four hour time frame. I'm gonna go down to let's go to the 15 minute time frame. So as we can see here, like I mentioned, broader informations um or three candles are just broader information on lower time frame. As we can see on the 15 minute, price is kind of just like hanging out, bouncing up and down from these levels here. Now, of course, there may be other broader informations that it's bouncing off or rejecting off of that I haven't drawn yet. But of course, this is just an example. And what broadening formations do, they let us know where price wants to go in the sense of, as we can see here, once price came up here and it reversed off of this upper area, where does price want to go next? It wants to go to the next broadening formation that we have down here. And as we can see, once price reversed, hit this level almost to the tick, and then it reversed back up, we started heading back higher to reach this level here. But of course, the sellers defended that area and then they just brought it back down and they killed it under the B, uh, the BF or broader information. Making sense before I continue? Any questions? Really quick. Um, so you're on the 15 minute time frame right now. Where did you go to, to start the broadening information on the higher time frame? The four Are hour? Yeah, I use the four hour. Something to note okay. when we're drawing our broadening formations. Is it going to uh, always be a three? Sorry, say that again. Is it going to always be like a range candle like that you're starting it from? Personally, I draw them from three candles only. You can also draw them from two candles okay. in the sense of, let's say, for example, we have this there and then there. And then let's move this. Let's just say we do something like this. So now we have this broader information off of two candles. But again, like I mentioned, since three candles are broader information on lower time frames, it just makes sense to draw them that way. And that's the way I was taught. So I like to keep it simple. Gotcha. But like I mentioned, you can draw them off two candles like this, but I just prefer three candles. It makes it easier 
to find. Can you put the um the candle back on the three and then where you had it on the two? Because I have a question with that, where you had it before. One moment. So I had this one right here. Let's zoom in. Why did you pick that two? Why did I pick this two? Yeah. So the reason why I is determine that. We're going when we're drawing our broader informations, and let me actually make a note so I can add that to the description of the video when I upload this later on, so you guys can understand how to draw them properly. But essentially, when we get our three candles, we're going to get the highest high in the range of the three, and we're going to connect our top point from there. And then we're, on the lower side, we're going to look for the lowest low in the range of the three, meaning, and now let me uh, bring these horizontal lines so it's a little easier to visualize. So looking to the left of the three, mm -hmm. the highest high in the range of the three is this two candle right here. Okay. This candle here would be invalidated because it broke above the three candle. Right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then you pick that one because that's the next closest low to the three? Exactly. This is the lowest low inside of the three. This inside. candle okay. um, is is low as well, but this candle is lower. lower. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Sometimes you'll get candles where like this one is the lowest one and you'll get a broad information that's like this. That's valid as well, but if... There's another candle that's a little lower in the range. This is how you'll draw it. Okay. Now, while this may look intimidating, let me go to, uh, let's go to Apple. If your broadening formations look like this when you're done, this is how you know you're drawing it correctly. Your, your chart is going to look crazy. However, when we're trading on an intraday basis, It's a lot more manageable, as we can see here. So like I mentioned, once price re uh, reverses or, re or bounces or rejects off of specific level, what broader informations are telling us is where price wants to go next. For example, let's, this is Apple on the one hour chart. Once we broke through these uh, support levels or broader information levels, we try to come back up, got rejected here, reversed back down, and hit this BF level down here, literally perfectly, as we can see here, literally whipped off that level. And this specific line is a daily one that I, I don't even know when I drew this. Yeah, I probably drew this months ago, and you can see that price is respecting that level still. To the reason why as strat users that we use broader informations is because as Rob describes, price doesn't stop at in a flat line. Like if you're using support and resistance, price kind of stops in a diagonal fashion, as we can see here uh, with Apple. You know, price came over here. And then instead of like bouncing off this level right here in a flat line, it's kind of like almost diagonal, as we can see here, right? Once it hit this level, near this level, now it's reversing back up to the upside, as we can see here. Making sense? Questions? Cool. Now, as we can see for Apple, right now, uh, we reversed off of the, let me go to the four hour, actually. So as we can see here on Apple, uh, we have a 2-1 setup, and if we break the high on Monday, more than likely, price is going to want to head back up here to this broader information level, if market conditions allow. If not, we can probably just come back up for a dead cat bounce and then just keep on dying back down, but we'll see. So the next portion of the strat, oh, actually, before I continue, uh, for broader informations, when we're drawing them, 
we I like to we start from the yearly chart all the way down to the daily. You can go down to the four hour time frame and draw them. I just personally prefer going down to the daily uh, because I'm not trying to be here for two hours, even though when you first start out, you probably will be. But the good thing about broad informations, once you draw them, never got to draw them again, unless new ones print. Um, so for the yearly, quarterly, and monthly timeframes, we draw broader information from the beginning that the stock was created. When it comes to the weekly, I go back at least two years and start drawing from there. The daily time frame, I probably go back two or three months. I don't, I don't really bother going back anything be before that. Now, of course, like I mentioned, you can draw them on the four hour as well. I'm just personally looking for the strongest broader information levels. Um, if you do day trade, you can use the four hour BFs as well. Uh, but I, I just stop at the daily. For Bitcoin, I stop at the weekly because I mainly swing Bitcoin. I don't day trade it. So I want, again, the strongest levels uh, to get those reversals off of. Cool. Now, the next portion of the strat is time continuity. Time continuity is simply like you're analyzing all the time frames to see exactly what the charts are telling us, right? As I always tell people, we always reference the chart to tell us what to do. You do not want to reference your emotions or what you think will happen. For example, just because you think the market is overinflated and it should pull back doesn't mean you should get puts and vice versa. If the market's super down, doesn't mean you should get calls unless the chart is telling you to get calls. So uh, with the time continuity portion, we start from top-down analysis. We start from the yearly all the way down to the daily or the four-hour, whatever you like. Um, so as we can see for QQQ, we are bullish. The yearly triggered a two up. Granted, we are coming back to entry. So more than likely, uh, clearly we're pulling back now, but overall bullish on the yearly time frame. Quarterly, uh, we've been bullish for a while, but we're trading inside on the quarterly time frame, and we're red. Monthly, monthly has reversed to the downside. So monthly bearish. Short-term, bearish. Weekly, same thing. Super bearish on the week. We literally killed uh, the whole, pretty much almost the whole year last week in that one candle. Daily, bearish. So highest time frame, bullish. Uh, as we go lower, we're bearish. So definitely short-term bearish on QQQ right now. And essentially what we prefer, what we want to do is we want to take trades that are in time continuity. Meaning if the market's bearish, I'm gonna wanna look for a bearish setup. I'm not gonna wanna buy calls just because, oh, well, look, it, it died 30, 30 points. It should bounce here. Well, yeah, it should. Doesn't mean it is. So we always want to get in long or short when the market tells us to. Go ahead. Uh, quick question. For this time continuity, uh, someone has showed me this indicator, I think it's called tap lock, where it gives you, depending on the time frame, I think it, it doesn't go beyond um, the daily, but for the daily, weekly, it tells you if it's red or green, which is you know bearish or bullish. Is that similar to what you're explaining here? Like, have you ever? Sorry, can you say it again? You cut off. If I've ever. Connection might be a little choppy. Um, if I've ever used it, I have not used it. Um, whatever that indicator is. For me, like I mentioned, the strat tells me what's going on. And even the, in the this specific indicator for the candles and time continuity is called Strat Assistant for those who use TradingView. If you use Thinkorswim, uh, I, have the, I have the scripts 
for the uh, candles as well if you want that and time continuity as well. Uh, just uh, just let me know and I'll post it. Or actually, I think it might be in my it might be in my um, my channel in the pin section for the studies to add the candle and think or swim if you use that. Uh, but generally, I just look at the time frame to let me know what's going on. Like I mentioned, you know, for think or swim, if I'm trading, I have my four time frames up. Usually the 15 minute here, the one hour, four hour, and daily. You know, clearly bearish, bearish, and bearish. So I don't necessarily need the time continuity time continuity indicator. It's just good to have on the chart. Um, but generally, I can just see it right now. Bearish, bearish, bearish. So clearly, I should be looking for um, bearish setups. Question. Um, okay. I'm sorry if I'm asking a lot of questions. But really quick. Um, so, um, okay. So, it go back to your higher time frame. Like, let's say you go to like a 12 month or a three. Okay, let's go do three month, three month quarterly. All right. So would you categorize this as being bullish? So the market overall is bullish, as we can see here. Right. But because um, we're in a three-month red candle, it would make us bearish. Currently, uh, yeah, I'll be short-term bearish on this because the, the monthly, the weekly, and the daily have already reversed to the downside. Okay. All right. All right. I get that. I get that. All right. Cool. That, that I, Yeah. That's because I, I, I kind of missed a part. So I was wondering, like, maybe if you looked at the higher time frames, like the candle, the most recent candle, if you're going off of that to determine whether or not it's bullish or bearish, but you're saying that you, you, you drill it down. So you go from year, uh, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. And based off of those, you're going to be looking for bearish setups since they all coincide with being bearish. Right. Correct. Now, right. I will also take long setups on a, you know, let's say like if the four hour is presenting a, a long setup and I'll go over the entries and exits and things like that in after this portion. Mm -hmm. um, but even if the higher time frames are bearish, I may take a bullish setup on a, like on a four hour or the daily time frame. It really okay. depends on what I'm looking at. All right. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> of course. And again, ask as many questions as, as you want. Again, we're learning experience. I love questions and just let me know. So uh, looking at QQQ, actually, let's go back to Apple. So Apple on the quarterly, we finally reversed to the downside. As we can see here, it did a 312 down. So Apple triggered uh, reversal to the downside on the quarterly. Definitely bearish on Apple. Monthly. We've reversed ever since December. So if you shorted and you were like running uh, leaps on for puts on Apple, you would still be in this trade because it reversed all the way back in December. And we've just been heading down ever since. So let's look at the four hour. Also, something that's very, very important. When you're trading the strat, we only use regular trading hours. We do not use extended hours. The reason being is because you're going to get incorrect candles and you're going to get incorrect time flips. Time flips simply means, as we can see right here, for the four hour time, or let's go to the one hour. For the one hour time frame, if, if the new one hour candle opens every uh, hour, every hour on, in, in between the hour, in the sense of 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, so on and so forth. But if you use uh, extended trading hours, the, t the candles are going to print every hour on the hour, which is incorrect. So we always need to, you need to be using uh, regular trading hours. And that's why you'll see these gaps in between some candles, because it's just the New York session. And you're saying only when you're using the strat method. Correct. For strat users, we only use uh, regular trading hours because if you use extended hours, I'll show you an example here. As we can see on, on Apple 4-hour, we have a 2-1 setup. If I go to extended, we have a 2-1 setup, but it is not the same 
as the regular trading hours version, as we can see here. Yeah. So we always want to make sure that we're on regular trading hours when, when we're looking for strat setups. Now, when it comes to the watch list, super simple. Sometimes I'll take other trades on different time frames, but just because people are looking at um, my watch list and I'm not holding their hand when to get in, when to get out, I found that the four hour time frame has been the best overall to take trades off of consistently for other people to use because I, I would prefer to give you guys uh, the higher probability setups um, than you know, going on like a one hour time frame that I may take that's a little riskier, but since I know how it moves, um, I know what to expect. But whoever might be new or just taking this off the watch list, they may not understand what I'm looking at on the lower time frame if I want to get in earlier. So I usually just focus on the on the four hour. So looking at Apple, uh, going back to the beginning, like I mentioned, with the strat, um, it's super, super, super simple. It it tells us when to get in, when to get out, and when to do nothing. Like I mentioned in the beginning, if we have an inside bar, there is no trade. We do not do anything. Now, I'm going to do the long side first, and then I'll do the short side second, so there's not a bunch of lines everywhere and confusing you guys. So for Monday, I would do this for Apple. Long above this level, first target is going to be the previous candle highs. So we're going to look to the left. This will be target one. You can use the body or the wick, whichever one you prefer. Target one. Target two. And then, of course, target three and so on and so forth. And for the stop loss, the stop loss, um, there's two different locations you can place it on. You can either place your stop loss under the setup candle, which will be the one in this, in this case. So my stop loss would be under this candle here. Or let's say the new candle prints and then let's just say for the sake of the conversation, uh, let's just pretend that there's a candle here that printed. And this is the this is the candle on Monday, pretending this is the candle. I'll put my stop loss under the trigger candle that got me in. I'm more of a tight stop loss kind of guy. So I like to put my stop losses under the trigger candle that gets me into the trade. Sometimes if it is an inside bar, but it's a smaller inside bar, like let's say a little shorter like this. I'll put my stop loss under that candle instead if it's within my risk tolerance. But usually I'm putting my stop loss under the trigger candle or above if it's a short side or a short trade. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Something to note as well. I also use the ATR indicator. ATR indicator uh, basically just stands for average true range. Uh, the average true range is um, essentially how much a stock moves in a day. So sometimes, let's just say for the sake of the conversation, let's just say we go short and then uh, the next the next target is like, let's say $5 away and there's no like uh, strat targets that we can use. I'll reference the ATR divided by three and or, or four and I'll take profit in relation to that what it gives me. So in this case, if I were to short Apple and there's like, um, let me see, great example right here. If I were to go short here and let's say my first target is all the way down here, that's a $4.30 move. For Apple, it usually moves $3. So instead, I'll look at the ATR divided by three and I'll take profit every dollar that it moves in my favor as well as the candle if it gets down here. Making sense? Yep. Cool. Now, when you're starting off with the strat, 
I'll, I think I also posted in, in my section, uh, the pin section, um, the Strat ebook. There's a bunch of different setups in the Strat ebook, like 2-2, two, two, uh, two, two, two trades, 2-2 two, two reversals, 2-2 two, two continuations, 2-1-2, two, 3-1-2s, two, so on and so forth. When you're starting off, uh, Rob always recommended to use, to start off with three different uh, setups. So he, you can use like, you can focus looking for 2-1, 2-1-2 setups, 3-1-2 setups, uh, hammer two setups, or, um, you know, reverse hammer or a shooter uh, two setup. A shooter is just a reverse hammer. That's just what Rob calls it. So, you know, like 2-1-2 two two down, 2-1-2 uh, two down, 3-1-2 two down, 2-1-2 two two up, 2-1-2 two two up. You can just look for like three different scenarios just so you're not like overwhelmed trying to take every single trade, you know? Um, just so you get familiar with it and understand how it moves. NVIDIA, for example, on Friday, whoever saw the watch list, we were short below this level. First target strat-wise is going to be the bottom of this candle. And then let's look for the next low, or the next target. So it'll be right here. And then the next target, this candle low, and then so on and so forth. So in NVIDIA's case, if you took that short, the strat just gave it to you. Target one, two, three, et cetera. Granted, to be fair, we usually don't get a, a sell-off like this, but um, again, it the strategy just makes it super simple. If it breaks this low, I'm going short. And then we just wait for our targets to be hit. And that's pretty much it. Quick question. Yep. So so like you said, right, Um, that flush, it, it, it doesn't come like frequently so my question to you is how would you have known to well i guess because it, it broke that first low um mm -hmm. it created that two i guess you would assume that the next candle would be another two so based on continuity because right now we're bearish ah, so, continuity. okay uh, more than likely we're going to continue lower right and because also, all of those all of the, all of the time frames would have been basically saying okay we're all bearish why not continue? Exactly. Got it. And let's say you got it on the four hour and um, you were like, all right, when should I get out? Generally, I do not recommend going to the lower time frames to get out because what you don't want is to look at the five minute time frame and be like, oh my God, look, price is reversing back up. Let me get out. Right. Look at the higher time frames. Look at the one hour. Two down, two down, two one, two down, continuation, two down, two down, all day. Nothing on Friday told you to ever get out of that NVIDIA short. Okay. And then the other question is, um, okay, so like, let's go back on the four hour. So we can say, right, that if we know that we're in a, a certain trend, if I see a one candle, essentially I can just wait for, because it's a con consolidation anyway, I can mm -hmm. wait for a break to either or side, but that doesn't always happen, right? It doesn't always continue in that direction or does it? So sometimes you can get a break on both sides or one or the other, and it'll turn into a three candle, as we can see here, three, 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 three. Mm, okay. So um, when I'm trading off the four hour, I'll take a short, and for NVIDIA, I like to take profit every $5 that it moves in my favor. Okay. So on, what was this, Wednesday? Uh, this was uh, last week or two weeks ago. This specific day, I took a short. Or actually, no, I didn't take a short. This was, uh, it was on this day that I traded it. Um, But let's say in this example, let's use, let's see. So in this day here, we opened up up here mm -hmm. at a slight gap up. So it triggered two up. They went higher. 
it went high up and then it got rejected, turned into a three down. So you could have played both sides based on the four hour um, levels. Long, and then once it reversed and triggered the short side, you go short. Right, so we can say that, um, this is another question. So, because that's kind of tricky, right? So let's say, for example, you caught the long up here, you, you right, you took that long. Would you say that you would exit when you return back to the entry? So you say that it wouldn't just, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, these are, this is where you can put your stop loss in this case. Like I mentioned, either at entry, one of my mentors that taught me, if it comes back to entry, he gets out. Okay. For me, since I like to give certain stocks a little breathing room, I would use 50% of the previous candle as my stop loss. Okay. So if it comes back and it, and it breaks that 50% level, it has a higher chance of becoming a three bar. Okay. And then in this case, if it became a three a three down bar, as we can see here, my stop loss for the three is going to be halfway through the three candle. So if I took the short, let's say here, my stop loss will be like, you know, in the middle of the three right. candle. Right. Okay. Something to mention for the strat, as soon as it breaks that level, we get in. We do not wait for a candle close because if you do, you're, you'll be way late to the party. The move is already done. So as soon as it breaks that candle to the up or down side, you get in. Oh, that's important. Um, okay, so just just one more time, if you could repeat that. So basically, um, and uh, again, one more example. So let's say it breaks as as soon as it breaks here, I would just immediately get into the the buy, and or the call, and then just write it up because there's no telling how far it would go up. Um, not necessarily, uh, it won't tell you like how much it, like, it won't tell you how far it'll go, go up, but more so in the sense of, oh man, I remember this day I traded, I traded this candle. That was beautiful. Because what, what, what I'm trying to, um, to, to um, avoid is like the false breakouts. Like that's what I'm thinking about. So remember with the strat, we're not necessarily breakout traders. Um, but the strat is just telling us what, what the price is wanting to do. If price is reversing up, I'm going to follow price. Right. So in this case, something to note as well, because we gapped up and then we came down, then we kept on going up. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to uh, gap ups or downs, what the only time, like let's say if it gapped up, like let's say for example on Friday for NVIDIA, it gapped up or it gapped down about 10 points from entry. Uh -huh. I'm not going to immediately get into puts because once it opened, it retraced back up and you would have eaten $10 worth of Delta against you. I'm not right. doing it. What we're going to be looking for is what's called the triangle day out or a TTO, as Rob calls it. That's just a pullback before we continue in the direction of the trend. I won't go too deep into it because we're um, near the end, but a TTO is just a pullback in the direction of the trend um, to get the best possible entry. Okay. For example, you uh, you had two um, opportunities in the first hour or two of the market. Uh, one of my uh, students took this two and two down. So on the 15 minute, it opened up, went up, inside, two down. He took this short to the downside. Where I entered in because I was focused on uh, Tesla, which was doing nothing, a little salty, but hey, it is what it is. Um, price came down, retraced back up, and I got in on this entry right here, on this uh, two down, because it broke that that wick on the bottom. I got in short there, had my stop loss up here. And then, of course, we're going to be targeting the previous candle lows. So my first target is going to be down here at this candle. And then I'll, I'll look to the left to look for, you know, the other previous lows to take as targets. So the reason why FOMO should never be a thing is because TTOs exist. If, if it's going to continue in the trend, it's going to give you an entry. We just have to wait. Like in this case, it gave you one entry there, and then it gave you another entry there. For bearish TTOs, 
you can look at it as an, in a dead cat bounce or an H pattern. So if we look at it here, we have a big drop, retracement up, continue down, lowercase h, or an h pattern. And you'll see them everywhere. If you missed that h pattern, it gave you another one here. Down, come back up, keep on going down. So it gave you multiple entries all day to get into this trade, to continue in the trend. Now, one thing... Uh, the reason why we use TTOs to get in as opposed to just getting in puts just because. Of course, you can take these continuations. I just prefer to take reversals instead of continuations. Unless it's like a 2-1-2 two -two continuations, but if it's like a 2-2 two -two continuation, usually I, I, I don't really like those personally, but you can still take the continuations because you can even take in this short here and you would have been fine. But the reason why we always wait for TTOs and never just jump in just because it triggered short and it got really far away is because we don't want to get trapped as a retail trader. Because we can see here, um, whoever jumped in late and like, I'm going to get puts. Let me get in puts uh, down here. As soon as you get in on this candle coming down, it immediately reverses up and you'll probably get stopped out because I'm not going to hold a 10 point move against me on NVIDIA. And then what happened? You get stopped off or stopped out. You know, the bus comes, picks all the, the smart traders up here, and you get left behind because you got stopped out and then it continues down. You do not want to be left behind. We want to get on the bus at the best possible moment. Any questions? And this specific setup, by the way, is a little more of the on the advanced side of the strat. So if you don't understand it immediately, don't worry about it. That's okay. Perfectly normal. I'll show you the long version on that other day that we had, the bullish day. This three, three, this three, one, two up. Uh, let me, let's highlight the candle so we don't lose it. Let's go on the five minute time frame. And some TTOs will be cleaner than the others. So looking at this right here, um, you had two opportunities to get in. This is not the cleanest version that I prefer, um, but we'll accept it for the, for the example. So we had the gap up. Like, again, you want to wait for that pullback and then the reversal to take you back up. Because if you got in on this two up candle, the next candle that printed, it reversed immediately. So where I would have entered at, once we had that pullback, on this double inside bar, I'll take that two up. First target, this high. Second target, this high. And so on and so forth. And then my stop loss would have been down here. So this would have been a winning trade. I would, once I hit target one, I would have set my stop to break even. And then once it pulled back, it would have stopped me out. But I had a second opportunity to get in right here. So I get in on that two up reversal, stop loss down here, target one, target two, and then so on and so forth, whatever other targets you may have. Any questions? Cool. Okay, well, well re really quick, sorry, sorry, Evan. Um, all right. So, so when you sign on in the morning, this is the last question, I promise. When you sign on <laughs> in the morning, right. Um, and you go to your four hour, do you look at overall, uh, price structure or do you just look at the past couple of candles? If that makes sense, like the I'll, most recent candles, I'll always look at the overall picture, but I'm mainly focusing on what's happening that specific day because I'm going to be day trading it. If I'm swing trading it, I'll put into perspective more of the bigger picture. But generally, okay. um, I don't really get on the chart in the morning and be like, all right, what's going on? Because you'll see that I always post my watch list the day before, um, mainly because I like to have more time in the morning to do my routines and things like that. Right. So I always do everything the night before. So as soon as I wake up the next day, I'm just ready to go. I don't have to do no no charting or anything like that. I'm already, it's, I'm already ready to go. All right, cool. That's it.
Thank you. I appreciate you. Absolutely. And of course, for those who are here and for those who are watching this uh, replay, um, I do offer like one-on-one -on -one sessions and I also have like an options course that pretty much goes over all of this and how I trade options um, on basically a daily basis for day trading, swing trading, all that good stuff. Um, part of the divine, well, since we're in the divine server, I'm going to give you guys a code that you can use if you do want to work with me or get any of my products. It'll give you $50 off of my single or my one-on-one -on -one sessions or my course. So you guys can have it. Um, I'll put that in the in the in my channel and also in the description of this of this replay video when I post it on my YouTube later on. Uh cool. So what was everybody's biggest takeaway of the session? I like that um you don't have a bunch of indicators. Um it you know seems just visually cleaner. A hundred percent. I always tell people, um, you know, you want to simplify your trading. the The more complicated you make trading, it's the the harder it's going to be for you. And what I've learned over the last four years, like all right, it's like after we get all this information, it's like all right, how can I simplify it, right? I used to be Mr. Spaghetti Lines. I used to have, um, you know, 5 EMA, 12, 8, whatever, you know, that used to be 9, 20, 50, 200, et cetera, RSI. Um, what's that other thing that people like to use? The TTM squeeze, things like that. To me, it just confused me because it's like, if the 9 crosses the 20, you go long. and but But then it's like RSI is saying short. TTM is saying short. So it's a lot of conflict. And with the strat, it's it made it extremely simple. Two and two up, go long. Two down, go short. That's it. I, of course, you have to like have a grasp of the strat to truly uh, use it to its best, greatest potential. But it's really that simple. You get a, a break to the upside, hey, I'm going long. I get a break to the downside, I'm going short. I'm not going to think twice about it. I'm, fo I'm following what price is telling me. So the strat, super game changer. Definitely grateful that I learned it. Um, any last things that I was going to mention? Um, any last questions that you guys have? No, this was good. I enjoyed it. Excellent. Same here. Uh, for for the next session, uh, I'll, I'll have these once a month. Um, I forgot to do it for this one, but I'll put a questionnaire in the in my channel before I announce this, so you guys can let me know. You know what do you want to go over in the session, so I'm not kind of just like talking about um, different things. We can like hone in on what you may want to go over, um, and that could be anything. Like I mentioned. Um, while, while I do specialize in teaching people how to trade and the strat and all that other stuff, I mainly specialize in like system building. So helping people create, um, systems that would work best for them as an individual, as a trader. Um, so it could be anything you can, you can ask, you know, we can go over, uh, like best journaling practices, um, techniques to manage your emotions while you're in trade, uh, you know, the proper mindset to go into trading with a bunch of different things. So anything you want to go over, just let me know. And you have the Strat ebook in your channel already, you said? Yeah, it should be pinned. Okay. Uh, let me see. Give me a sec. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have the thinkorswim indicator, the ATR indicator, uh, the Strat indicator. Uh, let's see. This is a video how to use trading view if you don't know how. Uh, what is the strat? And then uh, the TTO video that goes into what we explained earlier today. And all the links are there that you guys can reference. Okay. And the, let's jump here. Yeah, and then the ebook is here as well that you guys can download. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to be uh, uploading this to my YouTube. 
I'll also let you guys know. I'll post it in my channel when it's uploaded. Um, you can just search Cerulean Mind Academy on YouTube, and that's my channel. Um, again, for those who are in this Discord, or even just in general, I'm going to add in the code uh, DIVINE at checkout, $50 off for the course or a one-on-one -on -one session. If you do want to work with me on a more uh, personal level, I'll be here to help you out. Other than that, thank you everybody so much for attending. Um, again, any questions at all throughout the week or whatever, feel free to ping me or send me a message. If you do message me on the, the trading chat, um, I would prefer you to ping me like with my name because if you just say, hey, Advent, X, Y, and Z, I don't really look at the chat when I'm trading. I kind of just focus on what I'm doing. So if it, you know, it might get lost in there. So you can just ping me at you know my username so I can actually get notified that somebody's pinging me for a, something specific because somebody... Uh, reached out to me the other day in the chat and I, and, you know, I got lost because they didn't ping me. So again, thanks you guys. Thank you guys for uh, coming by. Appreciate all the questions. Love this stuff. If I, if you guys let me, we'll be here for another two hours, but <laughs> I respect everybody's weekend. Um, again, thank you for coming out and enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. We'll talk. Thank soon. you. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye.